Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to each and every last one of you. I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young Live, where right now I'm here with a patient that's on dialysis. Um, she is a young lady, a mother of three. She's a mother of three. She's young and she's on dialysis. And what we want to bring to y'all today is awareness about dialysis, um, how it affect people that's on dialysis, and that this is not a old person um disease or a old person medical condition it's happening to people that's young as well people who have kids and family members um right here in the 757 thank you new jersey welcome aboard everybody so um andrew you inbox me okay so we want just to, we just want to bring you the awareness about dialysis and how do it affect your daily living and things like that. I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young Live, where you do see it and hear here first before Wavy News 10, Channel 3, and also Channel 13 News. Good afternoon, and how you do? I'm doing fine. Myself. Veronica, it was a pleasure just meeting you just the other day. Yes, yes it was a pleasure I'm meeting sorry. you too as well. Yes, I met you through my daughter, Gabrielle, and your daughter was hanging out, and Gabby spent the night at your house. Yes, ma'am. And we spoke. Can you tell me how old you are? I'm 38. 38 years old? Yes. And you're living on dialysis? Yes. Can you explain to me what is dialysis? Dialysis is a, a thing that goes on with the kidneys. Okay. Um, it's just, it, it doesn't function okay. as well um, to the capacity that it needs to. Some people have, you know, they say that we can live with one kidney. But when you become a dialysis patient, that one kidney may have a different level than it functions at. Because I guess it's different levels that the kidney itself has to function to flush out all the toxins out of your body. So it's, it's mainly the thing with the kidneys. I mean, really, to be honest, you know, unfortunately, I became one three years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Can you kind of court yourself a little bit? If you can face me a little yes. bit. There you go. So you came, you became a dialysis patient three years ago. Yes. How did you realize that you needed dialysis or one of your kidneys was going bad? What is the telltale signs? Well, for me, I had no inkling of what was going on. It was almost like a shocker to me because I was going to work, to work in two jobs. And I noticed that my feet were really swollen. And I kind of like just shrugged it off. Like, you know, I got pregnant people feet, which is kind of not odd. I know I'm not pregnant. So it's something that's going on with my body. So I decided to go to the hospital. And that's when they told me that I had some type of kidney situation going on. I needed to see a kidney specialist. Living on dialysis, how do it affect your daily life? Um tired some days i could be really really tired sometimes i could be okay for me i think i normally have a good logist of a you know on a dialysis day i could come home cook um make sure the homework is done with the kids and stuff like that because the i have children younger children 17, how old are your kids 17 9 and i just had a son a year ago he turned a year november 27th of this year as you can see, she do have a one year old. Now, when you had your, when you was pregnant on dialysis, how did that, how did being pregnant on dialysis affect your life? It was rough because at the time before I got pregnant, I was working as a companion through, you know, doing the nursing, sitting with patients, and then when I found out, I had to leave my job due to the factor of me being pregnant because I had to do dialysis every day. And that was like every day, Monday through Saturday, because it wasn't open on Sunday. But if the holidays came around, they would be open on Sunday, and I would have to be there. It was almost like a job. I had to be there. So how many hours do you sit on a machine? I sit on the machine for three hours. Why are you on a machine? What is the machine doing? It's actually pumping the blood from the body. They actually stick me with needles in my arm. And it pulls the blood out of my body into a filter, and it filters the blood and put it back into my body. So it's being filtered. All your good, bad, everything is going in this filter 
to to actually get fluid any toxins to help the kidneys itself to kind of um relieve it from having to do so much work can we see your arm again yes Okay, this is your arm, and all this comes from dialysis. dialysis. Yes. So, when did your arm, your, did they call it balloon veins, or what do they call it? Um, it's a major artery. So, what they do is, when you first go in, they actually do surgery, which they cut inside the arm itself and connect the two major arteries right in there. And then, once you start dialysis, they stick you within that area where the vein is. So you can get a good treatment. Let me see it again, please. I noticed that after a time, because when I was driving the city transit, you don't start off with your arm blown up like no. that. Mm -mm. At the time, it causes your arm to blow like yes. that. Yes. Yes. What causes your arm to swell up like that? Well, once? from I mean, unfortunately, it's the way that they're sticking. If you're sticking in one particular area for too many, like too many treatments. It starts to get that balloon effect up from up underneath of being stuck. But if they, there's some people out there that really don't have these because they're not being stuck in that same particular area. But it's like a tune-up. Yeah, like me, I'm getting ready to have a tune-up real soon. And they're going to go in and clean the area of the vein to get all that extra stuff build up that's in the vein itself. Because it does happen. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Now... You need a kidney transplant. Yes, I just got active last month because they actually took me off the kidney transplant due to the fact that I got pregnant with my son. What's the hard part about you needing a kidney transplant? Me, I feel like in this situation, it's a waiting process. You know, unfortunately, I've read stories. I don't know if anybody else have read stories. I mean, normally when we go to dialysis, we sit in there so we have a chance to talk to other patients about different stuff we done read or seen. And we just so happened to go over an article about, you know, organs being thrown, thousands, billions of organs, kidneys, and stuff like that being tossed away overseas. When we actually have so many people over here that's in need of lungs, kidneys, you know, pank there's people that need pancreases. I mean, it's so many different things that is going on that we really don't know about unless we bring it to the forefront. So when I seen that article and a couple of nurses and patients, we had this conversation. We like, it's so many of us that need kidneys. And they're throwing them away like trash. It, it was like heart wrenching because you know that's that could be us. You know, speeding up the process. Actually, like I said, I haven't been on dialysis that long. I've only been on it for three years, but it's always good to be able to get that call to say, you know, we have a kidney available unless you have a living donor, which some people have a hard time finding a living donor. To do what that. make it hard for you to find a living donor or just a donor itself? Well, I've had people want to donate, but I think the part that gets them the most is that they have to go under and have the surgery. So they don't know the possibilities of what could happen to them. Cause you know, you just never know. You might need a kidney, you know, and then you go and donate a kidney to somebody else. And then you end up feeling like you're going to be in that same predicament as that person you're giving the kidney to. And they really do a lot of these, like I said, the kidney transplant, they definitely make sure that you in the great standing to be able to donate a kidney to someone like myself, you know. But what I was trying to get to your blood type. For your kidney, it makes it a little harder for Yeah, you. it does. It really does. Why is I that? am type A, which is not a uh, A positive, actually. I'm A positive, which is not a rare, you know, blood type. It's people that are out there that's A positive, A negative, B positive. Um, but majority of people, majority of people are actually O positive. So it makes it more easier for somebody that is O positive to get a kidney a lot quicker. 
if you had something that you want to say to people out there about what you're going through, having a one-year-old child, having a 17-year-old and a nine-year-old, how do it affect your kids, first of all? How do this being sick like this affect your kids? It, Starting with the 17-year-old. Well, I know for Kalia, my 17-year-old, it has definitely been a challenge to see her mom. She's there, you know, seeing her mom being sick and going through the different changes, mood swings and everything under the sun. And, you know, she's been standing strong, but I feel like she detached herself from the situation, which is her mold because, you know, it is hard to see your parent and to know that they're going through this, this major change. Anything is possible. Um, like I said, some things happen due to the factor of certain things that we may eat or how much fluid we drinking in a day because we're really not supposed to be eating certain foods or drinking no more than 32 ounces in a day. It's just like the chances we're taking as Dallas's patients because we have the renal diet that we have to follow. Some people don't. Honestly, I don't follow it all the time. I feel like everything is in moderation. You have to eat everything in moderation, but I don't touch certain stuff that I know is going to affect my heart because it will affect like orange juice. Um, it will definitely stop my heart being on the machine. Bananas because of the potassium in them. Like it's like we have to always take our binders because we want to make sure that we're binding the phosphorus in our bodies because everything that we eat has phosphorus. We may not think about it, but if you start checking labels, you'll see it. It's, it's decoded, but it's there. But we're, as dialysis patient, we can't get rid of it because our kidneys aren't functioning. So, like I said, for my daughter, you know, it's definitely not an, a, an adjustment she's good with, but she's dealing with it as positive she, as she can. How about your nine-year-old? She is the headstrong one. So she's doing the same. Like I said, it's, it's an adjustment to see your mom going through the changes. And, you know, today was her first day. I got She got the chance to meet my dietitian. You know, it's, it's so many different things that we have to go through. So it's, it's an adjustment, you know, even for them, because I'm trying to change their foods as well as my own. When it comes to the sodium intake and making sure they're drinking plenty of water and cutting back from drinking so many sodas because that could be the major contribute to the kidneys and why they stop working. What is one of your biggest fears? Leaving my kids here and them not having a mother. You know, that is the biggest thing that I have a problem with, you know, because I don't want to leave my kids here and, you know, not having their mom. All right, you can get the door. Right now, I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young live where we are interviewing a dialysis patient where she is explaining to us the effects that being on dialysis and having a kidney transplant, needing a tr kidney transplant is affecting her life as well as her kid's life. Yes, uh, until you go through something like this, you would never understand unless you take the time out and listen to what other people is going through. We may not always show you somebody out there getting hurt, someone getting murdered, someone getting shot, but let's live in real reality. People are li dying, living, living to die, and we're right here speaking with her. Okay, so we got to make sure we understand the things that we need to stay away from, the things we need to be aware of in case this may happen to us. And we're back. Yes. So your biggest fear is, you say, leaving the kids. Yes. My biggest fear is passing away and leaving my kids without a mother. Okay. You know, I've been their only, their only source to everything. You know, they do have fathers that are great providers and being in their lives like they need to. But I'm the source that holds the glue together for my kids. Just asking. And I hate to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive me, but I have to ask you this. Have you made any type, like, in case something should happen, what type of arrangements have you made for the kids? You know, and it's funny that you said that. I have made some arrangements. I have, you know, my youngest daughter, her godmother is going to step in if anything happens and take, you know, take my kids. But there are other people, family-wise, you know, that wants to step in as well. But 
a lot of my relatives are older. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be kind of hard for them to take them in as them being as young as they are. You know, and I wouldn't want to put that kind of responsibility on them because they are a lot older and they have health issues as well. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be running behind a 17-year-old, a 9-year-old, or a 1-year-old? You know, that's a bit much. So the fight for me is to just to continue to be here for them, you know, the best way I can. But at any day, a given moment, things happen. I've seen it myself, you know. You was explaining to me about at dialysis, you know, you said y'all talk while y'all there. Mm -hmm. Y'all, some people on the machine for three hours. You're one that's on the machine for three hours. Is anybody there on the machine longer than that? Yeah, it is people that's on the machine for four hours. Some might be up there for five hours. It just all depending on their treatment. Because some people come in with excessive amount of fluid on. So they might end up having to come in for four hours one day and maybe two day two on the next the following day have to come in for like two two three hours. So it's just it's just all depending on how that person is handling their body when it comes to coming home and eating certain stuff, drinking certain stuff. Like I said, you, if you're drinking more than 32 ounces in a day, you're going to go in with fluid. So being on dialysis, you can't take in no more than 32 ounces of fluid a day? Well, they want us to just drink 32 ounces in a day, but that's not consuming food because you have to think about it. Lettuce has is a water. If you drink, like, you don't have to drink your liquids. You could be eating your liquids. Like certain lettuces, like I said, lettuce is one. Um, there's certain fruits that's like watermelon. Watermelon is, is water. So you're pulling and eating that stuff and it's putting more on you. So when you go to dialysis, they have to pull that stuff off. And it's hard on the heart itself. So mm -hmm. that's why they tell us to make sure to, you know, stay within the 32 as much as possible. Wow, that's deep, y'all. That's really deep. So after the dialysis, life still is still still regulates your life throughout your whole day. Yeah. Everything you do is based around your dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. If it was something that you wanted tell people out there, what would you tell them about taking care of their health and their body? My thing to people that's not even on dialysis, I would tell people take care of yourself. Drink your waters. If you're going to drink sodas, kind of monitor yourself with the sodas because they're not good. Juices and stuff like that, they're not as good as we think they are. So it's just changing your eating habits, cutting back on your sodium, making sure you're doing some type of exercise. It don't have to be like hardcore exercise. It could just be walking from, from down the street back to the other part of the street. Just mainly just keeping yourself active and knowing your body. Because your body will tell you if there is something going on with you physically. So just be alarmed and make sure that you following doctor's appointments. You know, it's hard if you don't have insurance, but you know, even if you just get in tune with yourself, you would know that there are things going on so you could be able to at least kind of stop it. Sometimes it's just something that happens, you know. How important is it that we all check the box on our driver license for donors? It's actually good to actually do that. But with so much stuff going on with, the, you know, people coming up missing and organs being missing, they tell you, well, you don't do that, do that. I think that it's a, it's a positive thing to do it. You know, because right. we need to know those things. You know, things do happen. And, you know, we, like I said, I'm a kidney doing, I need a kidney. So, with me needing a kidney, you know, it would be a blessing in itself to find out, hey, you know, somebody just recently got into an accident and they, they're a donor. You know what I'm saying? So, they're right. able to donate to somebody else. You know, it's a gift. It's right. definitely a gift. Right. It's a sad story that we're speaking on today. And um, it was something else I wanted to ask you. So you are a positive. Yes. So you're rich or not right now. She's <laughs> Somebody said something about money. No, the gift of life is not money. You can't monetize that. What she's saying is 
If it's anybody out there with an A plus kidney and you like to donate one, she's here and she needs one as well. And um, if you have not checked the donor box on your driver license, it's good because it's people out here like herself that can use, you know, a kidney or maybe an eye or a liver, anything. You know, instead of just letting it go to waste because people have families out here. And we are praying that nothing happened to no one in order for her to be blessed with a kidney. But if you out there, you have a kidney or you want to donate to her and you're A+, plus, please make it possible. I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young Live. Well, we have from Mrs. Veronica, story to you live, uncut and unedited, straight out of Norfolk, Virginia, the 757. And when I posted this story that we was going to do this story on yesterday, so many people hit me in their inbox and say, I am a dialysis patient too, young with six kids. I live in South Carolina. Um, I'm a dialysis patient as well. I live in Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm young with three kids. So there's a lot of women out here that is on dialysis and men that need our help out here. You were telling me something really, really sad that you see when people come up missing from dialysis and everyone try not to talk about it. You said that's sad when y'all notice that. Yeah, it's, you know, unfortunately, it's a HIPAA law where you can't really, just they can't discuss those things. I feel like when we go to dialysis, we're one big family. So we are so in tune because we are there for so many hours and we're able to build those relationships with other people. It's one big family. So... When you stop seeing people come in for your treatments, it's like, what happened? You know, but they're not able to tell us. Now, if we, if we look it up and just so happen to find it or one of their relatives is real close to us and notifies us and let us know that that person passed, it's like heart-wrenching because we're one big family, you know. But unfortunately, that's what happens um, on, with, with dialysis patients. You know, some people just give up the fight, you know, because they're hurting from internally to heart situations to, you know, the drive is not there anymore. I mean, we can stay prayed up and ask, you know, God to get us through it. But emotionally, it's stress, you know, because we're sitting on those machines and they are filtering our bodies. And sometimes we're just so tired and so drained that it's just, it's a bit much, you know, but I tell people don't give up. It's not a deathbed. You're not, don't give up on the life side, you know? So I feel like just continue to keep fighting, continue to keep praying, continue to build up a support system, even if you don't have it in your friends or family. The people you're sitting with at dialysis, build a relationship with them. They are your biggest supporters as well. So, And realize that dialysis is serious and it's yeah. painful. Yeah. It's, yeah. Very, it's very painful because you're not able to work now. No, unfortunately I can, but um, it, it'll take away from what I got, you know, because I do have a one-year-old. So me going out there and trying to do dialysis... That is a bit much, you know, because I'll be tired and trained from a job to then have to come home from dialysis and then have to deal with kids. It's just, it's a combining of too much. So I have to have a great support system, you know. Unfortunately, you know, I'm used to bringing in a lot of money. I was working two jobs, you know, becoming a dialysis patient. Someone want to know, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And do you have a relationship with him? Oh, yes, most definitely. Someone say, keep praying, God going to cover you. Yes, ma'am. Someone else out there say, uh, if anybody out there with an o, a o plus or O positive kidney, they need one as well. Um, you got prayers coming from North Carolina. Thank you. Um. Someone said, I think you can O plus, A plus, B plus, A, B plus. Um, there's a lot of people out there praying for you right now and asking you to keep your head up and you're, you're not alone. They're praying for you as well as I'm praying for you. Um, Sydney, uh, Cindy say amen. Amen mean to agree. Someone say, stay, um, Tracy say, stay strong, sister. Tammy said, yes, I really understand what you're saying. My mother did it for 10 years. God bless you. Thank Keep your head up. South Carolina said, we're praying for you. Thank you. 
but only receive O. Someone said she considered PD is a form of dialysis as well. Prayers from Tennessee. Pray, praying for you and your family. Praying for Indiana. Praying for LA. Um, Tamika is watching. Praying for New Orleans. They say they're in the house. Um, being PA, amen. Um, Maryland is praying for you. My father-in-law who was retired cop four times a week on dialysis still work until the day he died. Amen. Yes. Um, my, my God, my God healed you in Jesus name. Amen. Praying for Kentucky, praying for Detroit, praying for Kentucky. Christopher is watching, praying for the Midwest. They say they're on the scene of it right now. They say, I'm sending you prayers from Mississippi, praying for you. Joel says she's praying for you. you. Christian is watching, watching right now. Elizabeth say praying for you with hugs and kisses. Praying from Florida. They're making it rain on you with prayers. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, pray for my cousin Veronica Bell. That's your, crystal, your cousin Crystal. Yes, Liddy say continue to be strong and positive, sweetie. They're praying for you. Praying from Texas. And we are on the scene of it right here from the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. And we are self and we thank you for each and every last one of y'all for y'all continue. Continue prayers and blessings over her life. That God will bless her with the things that she need to live a fruitful life, a positive life, and that she should live until she see her kids get grown and also her grandkids. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. We all love you. And we love each and every last one of you that is going through what she's going through right now. Sickness is real. It doesn't matter what type of sickness you have. Sickness is real. And we're praying for anyone that's in home and shut in that can't get out. We're praying for the people that's um that's just in the hospital. We're praying for the ones that's um um on what's the thing? What hospice care. Mm -hmm. We're praying for the ones that's worried about their doctor's appointment and their results on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to cover each and every last one of you. By the blood of Jesus, I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young Live. Well, we did bring you this story, like I said, live, raw, and uncut. Until next time, y'all, take care of your health.